Hey, this is Brother Jeff, and I'm going to walk you through on how to do some color modifications or some visual changes to the uh, Storyline games. Now, I'm going to use uh, one game as an example, but uh, this pretty much is set up very similar to other games. So if you wanted to visually change uh, one of the games, you can uh, use these concepts to change other games as well. So I'm actually going to start out with the Scientist game. Now the scientist game has a very you know visual design. It has a, a logo, has a pattern in the background. Um, the buttons have uh, gradients as well as reflections, um, and also this canister here. Um, <clears throat> so there's a lot of stuff that you may want to change visually. You may want to change the hover states, the down states, uh, over states, and stuff like that. Um, and so we're going to talk about how to uh, go in and to customize some of this stuff. So first of all, you have to have this downloaded. And once you've downloaded it, um, what I recommend doing is uh, starting a new project, going into that project, and inserting a new slide. Um, now once you've inserted that new slide, choose the game that you want to modify. Um, and you can do this within a course or if you wanted to make the change and save it as a template so you can use it for other courses, um, then there's a couple of different steps that you would have to take. But I would recommend if you're going to do that to have a completely separate course with only this page inside uh, so you can save it as a template and then reuse it. So I'm going to go through that approach first. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and import my game here. And since this is going to be a template, I don't want there to be multiple slides. I only want there to be one slide. And so once this has been done importing, I'm going to go ahead and go into this first slide here. And I'm going to right click it and I'm going to delete that slide. <clears throat> because I can save this, let me go ahead and just save it as a file here on my desktop. And so I'm going to name this Updated Scientist. And again, you can do this same thing with all games. Um, but now it's a project, so I have all of my content within a project that I can then save as a template uh, in a little bit after I've done my visual changes. <clears throat> now, some of the stuff that you can do on the first page, for example, is you can go in and you can update the logo. I can either hide the current logo and then insert my own logo if I wanted to. <clears throat> I can then come in and change the uh, continue button or I can move the continue button. It, the continue button is set up a little bit different so if you select the continue button go to the states button or the states tab you notice if I hover over the up and the down state uh, basically what this is is a gradient so if I click on the edit states you'll also notice that there is a, a separate shape that is um, the reflection so if you don't want that reflection to show you can go ahead and delete that uh, reflection if you just want that gradient to be there or you can even come in and uh, or make sure that you do it for all the different states or you can go in and modify the reflection if you wanted to change it to a different color uh, or anything like that <clears throat> but then you can also come in and change the color of the button so if I select the button I can go up into formats and here I can change it to a solid color but uh, really this button is a gradient and so uh, there's a couple things you can do. You can come down to gradients and go down to more gradients or I found it faster just to click on this uh, little expand button at the end of the shape styles <clears throat> because it will bring up the format shape button and I can go into the fill section and come down to my different gradient stops and on my different gradient stops I can see where the start position is and then I can come in and change the color. I can choose from one of the default colors uh, if I wanted to go to more colors here. Um, and then I can enter in my own hex value or even use the color picker to choose a color. Um, now typically when you're doing a gradient, you want to, if you're going to choose a gradient, you want to choose a darker color for the bottom or the top, it doesn't matter. Um, and then go to your next stop, so I'm going to go to stop 2. And I want to choose a lighter version of that color that I just chose for the darker. Um, and that way, it just has a subtle hint of a change. Um, and it's just basically it still gives you that nice kind of flow to it. So if that still doesn't work, maybe I can go a little darker there. And then on stop one, I can go even darker there. So I have even more of a darker kind of gradients. Now you can get a lot more specific if you have Photoshop and just have even more slight changes. Um, but this is the way that you can do this inside of, uh, inside of uh, Storyline here. Now, this also has a border. You can uh, tell a little bit 
or if it does have a border, you if you can't tell, you can just select it, go to line color, and in this case, it does have a, a solid line, and it's kind of a blue border, but let's go ahead and change that to match more of the red there. That way, it's just kind of a slight hint to it. So, um, And then I would need to come in here and change the, the color for the hover state. Now, the hover state, you can have it be a little bit lighter um, once the learner hovers over it. So let's go in and change, uh, go back into our shape color, and I'm going to go to stop one. I'm going to have this be a lighter color, actually right there, and then stop two. I'm going to have it just be slightly lighter as well. And that way I can see that when the learner hovers over it, they're going to see a light highlight. Um, and then coming back into that, let's also change the uh, border. All right. Now I like to preview this just to make sure it looks good. All right, and so there, I forgot to uh, unhide my logo, so I don't see the logo here, but there I see my new color, and as soon as I hide over it, or hover over it, it will change to the uh, lighter color as well. So that's how you update your buttons inside of uh, Storyline. And um, then from here, I can just go ahead, let's say I wanted to apply the same type of look to the Start button. Now, the nice thing about Storyline is you can select any object and come to the Home tab, and then click on this Format Painter. That way I don't have to go in and pick the same colors for the same buttons, the same type of look. All I have to do is come into the Instructions tab, our Instructions layer, and just select that button or make sure it's unlocked first of all. Um, unlock it before you do the Format Painter or else you'll have to come back here and select it again. Um, but as soon as I select that, you'll notice that it's now changed. I, I did lose my Start uh, text here. Um, and that, that depends on how the button is set up, but you can just type in start again, and that way it has the same kind of look and feel. And just select that, go throughout the different uh, questions anytime this that blue button is used. And you can do the same thing with the different buttons here. So if I decide on my buttons, if I go to edit states, if I wanted to get rid of that reflection, I can get rid of the reflection also. Or let's say I want to uh, use a different color fill uh, let's say I wanted to use green instead of the uh, blue there or the black there. I, I Let's say the border I wanted to use more of a, well, I wanted to match more of a green there as well. So, and then I come in here and I want this to be more of a red. And then also the outline to be more of a red. Now, if I wanted to uh, apply this same effect to other buttons, I just go back to my Home tab, click on Format Painter, select that button, come back up to Format Painter, select the new button, come back up to Format Painter, select the new button. And then if I wanted to continue on to the next question, I'll go select Format Painter again, go over to my layers and select the new button and continue there. And that's um, an easy way, once you have the design of one button, to make sure that you apply it to all the different buttons throughout the different questions. Um, and that's just a, a quick way so you don't have to repeat the same process of changing the normal state to green, then changing the hover state to red, and then changing the down state to a different color on every single button. So the Format Painter does help tremendously that way. Now, <clears throat> you can also come in and change the uh, backgrounds. Now anything that's uh, that's not there by default or it's not easy to select means that it's locked and so you have to unlock it before you can change it. So I can come up to format. Let's say I want to get rid of that shadow. I can select the shadow, the shape effects, go down to shadow and then I select the no shadow there. And that way it doesn't have that shadow around it. Now I would have to apply this effect to other backgrounds as well. So keep that in mind. Um, if I wanted to make it all the questions match or I could resize if I want to give a little less room for the question area or a little more room for the question area um, I can just resize that shape right within here or I can change the color of the background if I wanted to change it to something different I can also come into the text go into the home tab and then change the color of the text as well and so there's a lot of, uh, because we built these images inside of Storyline itself, so we did not use, uh, for the most part, there's some, um, some things that are still 
made in Photoshop and then brought in. But for the most part, we tried to do as much inside of Storyline itself so you have more control on uh, how the visuals will appear if you wanted to go in and to uh, change that. Now, if you wanted to change the background and the pattern, the way that you do that is through the master slide. And you'll notice that there's no layer that says the background. Um, because this background is going to apply to all the different layers, we wanted to do that within the master slide itself. So if you go into View, <clears throat> the View tab, and you go into Slide Master, under the first tab, you'll notice a couple different things. You'll notice the shape, and then you'll also notice a texture. Um, now, actually, the shape there is... Okay, so there's it's set up a little bit different. This shape is actually text, but the texture here you'll notice is a pattern, kind of a checkered pattern, and it's different with each game. Um, and there sometimes there also may be another shape below it, which is the background color, and it's a square. Uh, but sometimes it's also just the uh, background. If you select background styles, um, go down to format background, you can actually see the gradients, the radial gradient that's behind it, which is kind of a, a dark blue to light blue you can come in and you can change those colors so and this again is by going to background styles and then format background you can select one of the default ones by hover over them I can kinda of get a preview of those um, or you can get a custom one by coming into stop two and then going through and so let's say let's do more of a green I mean, yeah okay so let's do more of a green there and stop one because this is a radial gradient will be in the middle here and so uh, I can change this from a radial to a rectangle, linear path, or whatever. Um, and then I hit um, close. And now if I come and take my texture, I kind of move that off to the side. But if I go to format and then go to align, I can align it to center. And then if I can align it to the middle. Now this will align it to the stage if it's the only object selected. So keep that in mind. If you have multiple objects selected, then it was just going to align it to whatever objects you have selected and not the stage. So now that I've uh, finished that, I can come back into the Slide Master tab, click on the Close Master Slide, and now you'll notice as I go throughout my interaction that uh, my background with the checkers uh, is now changed to more of a green fill. So here's my interaction with the uh, green background. Um, that I've changed. So you can also come in and change the patterns. Now we do have a bunch of different patterns within the library. So if you come into graphics and go to backgrounds, um, <clears throat> here's that checkered background. You can go in and you can download a different type of pattern, which is a transparent PNG. And so you can just take that PNG and you can download it and then you can import it inside of uh, Storyline. So let me show you how to do that real quick. So I'm going to come in, let's say I want this interaction or this background. I'm going to download the PNG and let's do the dark version of it. <clears throat> now I'm going to come into Storyline. I'm going to go back to the Slide Master and I'm going to get rid of this pattern and I'm going to go to Insert Picture and now I'm going to go to my Downloads, grab the City Rays background and click Open. And um, to align this to the top, I'm just going to click on Align and then go to Align Top. Now, <clears throat> I want to make sure this is at the very bottom so it doesn't mess up anything with the text or anything like that. But you'll notice it's very dark. We need to change this so it's a little bit more transparent. Now, the way that I do that is by clicking on this little um, Expand Format Shape area. Uh, and if I click on that, I can now go to Down to Picture. And so you'll notice in picture we have a transparency slider. Now the transparency slider allows me to up this so it's not as dark. So it's a little bit more transparent here. So you just kind of want a slight hint to it. And now if I come back into Slide Master, close my slide, you'll notice the background, the pattern has changed. And so we have a lot of those different types of patterns that you can choose from by going into graphics and backgrounds and you can mix and match those with the different games available or the different, uh, the different templates available as well. So those are some things that you can do for uh, visually changing your, uh, your games. Now some of the images like this for example, those are uh, PNGs that you would actually have to go in and modify through a Photoshop file so keep that in mind uh, that these ones aren't as easily changeable. Um, but for everything else, there's a, and that's a very rare occasion, but everything else you can go in, 
You can change the look, the fill, the background, and make it really uh, more of your type of uh, theme to it as well. So, But that's how you get started with uh, some of the visual changes for the uh, storyline games inside of the template library.